I'm going to tell you about the second part of the planning exam, which is the time plan. Now, the time plan is worth 23 marks, um, so it's a significant piece um, of work that you need to get right. The idea is that you will dovetail all of the recipes that you have chosen into a logical plan. So what dovetail means is that you take um, part of one recipe, move on to the next bit, move on to the next bit, go back to the first bit, etc. So that you're multitasking rather than just following, I'm making pizza whirls, therefore I'll make all of that. I'm then going to make um, chili con carne, I'm going to make all of that. So instead you're doing a little bit so that you make maximum use of your time. Now your planning exam will be two and a half hours. It's really important that you get your timing right. So you can't finish early and equally you can't finish late. If you're finishing early, it hints that the dishes that you've chosen are simply not skillful enough. If you finish late, it means that either you've been too slow doing the tasks or too slow doing the, um, the allocation of time or that you've chosen the tasks badly so that they don't fit into two and a half hours. So the choices is the crucial part. So what you need to do is once you've got your um, the choices correct, you've got to then plan how you're going to use your time. Now it might be easiest to actually start on a scrap of paper and to say, okay, I'm making pizza whirls, I'm making um, a chocolate cake, I'm making some sausage rolls, and then I'm going to make my chili con carne um, and some vegetables. So what would be the best way to do it? Now, if you're making a meal, then your meal has to be served hot at the end of the two and a half hours. So that would be your two course meal with your accompaniments. So probably they would come further down in your planning, assuming that it doesn't involve some sort of pastry dish um, in the choices that you have made. So the general advice would be that if you've got anything like bread or cakes or pastry, to start those at the beginning of the test. So you'd come in and the first few minutes you'd get yourself organised, you'd get your um, ingredients out and ready, and then you'd probably make a yeast dough. You'd then cover the bowl, leave it to rise somewhere warm. You'd probably then go on to make um, a pastry dish, particularly if you've got something like sausage rolls. So you'd make your rough puff or your flaky pastry, You'd cover that and you'd either put it into the fridge to chill if you didn't need it for about an hour or if you needed it relatively soon you might put it into the blast chiller. You then would probably go on to make your cake if you're having a cake and you'd actually have to cook that. Okay, So 10 minutes before you actually wanted to put it into the oven your instructions would say light the oven. They don't want it lit more than 10 minutes before you need it because otherwise it's just wasting fuel. So regardless of whether your recipes all say at the beginning, light the oven, light the oven, you don't do that until you know that you are ready actually to start putting something into the oven. So you might go on to make your cake, put that into the oven, and then you might then go back to the first recipe that you started. So by now your, your um, pizza dough or your bread dough might have risen. So you might then be able to shape that, for example, into some bread rolls or shape it into your pizza rolls. And then you'd actually got time to leave it to prove a second time. So again, you'd leave it, cover it with cling film, you'd put it out of the way until it doubled in size. Therefore, you should get a great result on anything with bread. Um, at this point, though, you might think, well, actually, I'm not quite ready for my sausage rolls. I'm going to go on to my two course meal. So you may do that. And then later on you may, by then you might be taking your cake out of the oven and you might be ready then to um, finish off your pizza whirls or finish off your sausage rolls and put those into the oven. You don't have to keep turning the oven on and off between each thing unless you know that it's genuinely going to be off for an hour. You don't need it for an hour and therefore it would be a big waste of fuel but otherwise you'd leave it in. Um, three marks are allocated for use of the oven but actually one of those goes for turning it on one of them goes for turning it off at the end. So the other one actually is to do with how you're using it. Um, and it's important that when you're giving instructions, you say, when you put your cake in, for example, you, you give what's called a test for readiness. So you'd say, bake the cake for 20 minutes. And then you'd say, until it's golden brown and springy. That's the test for readiness, golden brown and springy. 
um, later on then, 20 minutes, 25 minutes later, you then take the cake out of the oven and you might again say if it's golden brown or you might have another test for readiness such as if it's shrinking away from the sides of the tin which is what happens when you um, have a cake. So that sort of instruction is crucial if you want to get the marks for using the oven. As far as then um, deciding what order to do things in, you actually get 10 marks allocated for having a correct sequence. Now that's an awful lot and it's very easy to lose marks, but if you think about the fact that you're making roughly five things, it comes down really to having a couple, per, um, a couple of marks per product. So it's not quite so scary if you think of it like that. Um, you also need to get five marks for the method. Now the methods are really important. They don't want you to sit and copy out the whole of a recipe for making a chocolate cake. If actually you can summarize it in a line or two. So I'm gonna just tell you what you might write if you are making a cake. So you may write, make the cake by the creaming method and fold in the sieved flour with a metal spoon. So anybody really who knows how to make a cake would be able to follow that instruction. Equally, you could write, cream the butter and sugar until soft, gradually add egg, fold in the sieve flour. That hasn't missed out any of the key elements, but again, it's written in a line or two rather than in a whole page of a recipe. If you're making a roux sauce, you might say, make the roux sauce, gradually adding the milk, bring back to the boil, until thick. And again, you've covered most of the key points. If you're making pastry, like shortcrust pastry, it would be rub the fat into the flour using the fingertips, add cold water to make a dough. And remembering that pastries need to be rested, in other words, you need to put them into the fridge covered so that they can relax and so that hopefully then when you cook it, um, the gluten relaxes and the pastry will not shrink. Okay, other instructions that you're going to have then, or marks that you're going to have allocated, you're going to get three marks just for cleaning up, in other words, for washing up. So one of those washing up slots has to be at the end, the very, very end of the session. So if it's a two and a half hour session, by two hours and 20 minutes, you should be on your last 10 minute wash up. Somewhere else then, in the two and a half hours, you need to have two more slots of about 10 minutes. Um, and for that you get three marks allocated. You also get two marks for serving your dishes. Now they're an easy two marks to get if you get it right but equally they're very easy to lose if you don't. So I'll start with the recipes. So I had my pizza whirls. When they're cooked I would say serve on a wooden board or a slate garnished with some basil. If I had my chocolate cake, I would say serve on a cake stand, serve on a doily on a cake stand. Okay. Um, if I was having my chili con carne and rice and my two vegetables, I'm going to be serving that at the end, and that I'll come back to that in just a moment. But I'd have to describe what I want to put them on. Now, if I'm having something hot as a main meal like that, I've got to pre-warm my serving dishes. So just before I need to put the, my chili con carne onto a plate or into an oven-proof dish, whatever I've decided I want to put it in, I have to say pre-warm the serving dishes and the vegetable dishes, and if I'm going to eat it off a plate, the plates that I'm going to eat it off, I've got to pre-warm those. Um, then I might say put the rice um, in a ring around on the on the plate and the chili in the centre and garnish with some coriander. That would be my chili con carne served. Um, I might also say, um, put my vegetables into an oval dish. If I was having soup, I would have my soup in a soup bowl that had obviously been pre-warmed and my bread rolls would have gone into a basket. So you have to think through each dish, what would you put it on and what do you have to serve it on? And at the same time, you're going to say what you've garnished it with. Now, if you um, have garnished something in your shopping list, you also need to say that you want some garnish buying for you. It won't just imagine you know, it won't just magic itself there. So you need to put that in there. Um, serving it then at the end, as I said, you've got um, a, this is for a meal type um, situation. 
about 25 minutes before the end of the test. So if we imagine we were finishing at half past 11, okay, round about five past 11, you would serve course number one. And then 10 minutes later, you would serve course number two. By the time you've then done that, if you've got anything else left that you haven't served, like you haven't taken out a roulade that's been in the fridge uh, because it was kept in the fridge to keep the cream fresh or whatever, you could serve those dishes. If you've served all your dishes earlier, because in fact they were just single dishes like sausage rolls, which can actually be served at any time because they're not part of that meal, um, then the last few minutes that you have are simply the tidying up. Okay. So that's how your marks are allocated. Now, when it comes then to filling in the sheets, you have a time plan like this, and you have two of them, okay? That is the maximum that you're allowed to have, two sheets of paper. Now within that, it's subdivided into time, the method basically, and the special points. Now the special points are things like, um, checking the shells in the oven, giving your points for readiness, um, turn the oven off at the end, um, making sure that you're hygienic, um, warming the serving um, plates. Or if you are using something like a food processor, it's really important that you say that you use, if you're making breadcrumbs, you use the steel chopping blade. So whilst in the, the main method you might say, um, make the um, bread into breadcrumbs, in the special points, you could then say, use the steel chopping blade. If you're using the microwave, you have to say how long you want to use it for and what power you want to use it on. So therefore you, you would say, melt the chocolate in the microwave, and in the special points, you would say for one minute on full power. Um, you can also use the special points if you're cooking something. So if you're cooking some potatoes, you might say, um, add the potatoes to the boiling water and then in the special points you might say cook for 10 minutes until tender or you could say put a lid on the potatoes and cook for 10 minutes until tender so that's what in a way means that you can fit your time planning onto two pages because you've actually got the two columns if you leave out the special points column and leave that almost blank to try and get your five recipes onto just the, the method column will be a real squeeze so you need to use both of them carefully in order to get um, the information on there. As far as allocating time is concerned, you're looking at no less than five minutes, okay? And probably no more than 10 minutes. So you have to have a bit of an idea as to how long something's going to take. So if you're going to, for example, um, roll out some biscuit dough to make some gingerbread men, there's a good chance that that will take more than five minutes by the time you've rolled it out, cut them, put them onto the line tray, got all the scraps, re-rolled it, cut them out, put them onto the line tray. So you might allocate 10 minutes for that. But equally, if all you're doing um, is um, chopping an onion, it might not even take five minutes. But you can't just say, oh, that will take two. Instead, you've got to think, well, what else could I be doing in that five minutes to fill the five minutes? So it might be to dice the onion and to grate the carrots or to boil the kettle to make the stock. Some things that you make will mean that you actually have to focus on them the whole of the time. So if you're making a roux sauce, you might, in the method, you might say melt the, um, the butter and flour, um, gradually stir in the milk and then um, bring back to the boil. There's your roux method but you can't wander off and do something else. If you're making pancakes, you can have things in the oven. You can um, be watching, you know, having your, your potatoes boiling on the hob at the same time, but you can't be chopping an onion while you're frying a pancake. Or if you're frying fish cakes, you can't be doing very much else. You might be able to rearrange some salad on the dish, ready to garnish it, but they take, a, you have to have attention if you're doing things like that, if you're not going to end up with it burnt. Whereas something like a spaghetti bolognese, once everything's in there, the liquid, you've got it simmering on a low heat, you can walk away and you can get on with other things at the same time. Do make sure that you try and use um, labour saving equipment if you can. So if it will speed up uh, making your cake mixture by using an electric mixer, then do so. If you can use a food processor for chopping bits and pieces, then you can do. 
Um, we do have the big Kenwood mixers, which are good if you've got a large mixture, like for a chocolate cheesecake, but not so good if you've only got a very small mixture. So be wary um, of using these things. And the microwave is very good for speeding up melting chocolate instead of using a bain-marie. Um, very good for using fish. So hopefully that covers most of the points that you need for your time plan. As I say, it's a very important um, part of your planning and you need to allocate plenty of time within your planning test to actually um, fill this in properly so that when you actually come to cook, your plan will be useful for you.